So thank you very much for Aviation Week, actually, for this opportunity. Um, we all here present uh, are gathered here today, actually, to give you some insight on our project. I think this panel is very different than other panels that you may, you may have seen or you will see, in the sense that we are a team right now working together, and we are here to give you some insight. Uh, some insight on a very promising project, some insight on a very concrete project uh, for the launch of the first EV toll network in the world. And that will be happening here in Paris for the summer 2024. So first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Solène de Bris. I'm part of Group ADP, which is Paris Airport. Uh, Group ADP here is actually uh, the accelerator of that project, so we are the main coordinator uh, of the ecosystem. So we've created an, an ecosystem and we are coordinating this ecosystem. That's what we all gathered here today as part of this ecosystem. So before introducing every panelist, uh, let me just tell you our common goal. And we're also just waiting for our final panelist. And uh, it's quite funny because it's an emergency doctor, so we will not blame him when he arrives late. <laughs> um, so our common goal here is to make advanced air mobility a reality. Um, so with a decarbonized, a flexible, a quiet way of transport for people, uh, and our goal also is to become pioneer, to become the first uh, ecosystem, the first group in the world to achieve this. And ambition is actually going beyond the commercial use, and that's why we will have the Paris Hospital with us, um, and actually use it for commercial use case, but also medical use cases. Uh, so, Matthew, if you can hear us, please don't hesitate to jump on the scene when you're, when you're ready. Um, so, here today we have the French Civil Aviation Authority, represented by Thierry Alain. I will just let you introduce yourself. Yeah, so I'm Thierry Alain, Innovation Program Manager uh, for the DESAC, which is the Civil Aviation Safety Directorate. I'm also the VTOL on the Airship Focal Point. Thank you. We have Romain Erny, who represents Paris Region and Choose Paris Region. Hi, everyone. Pleasure to be with you this morning. So I'm Romain Erny. I'm head of mobility at Choose Paris Region. So just a few words about Choose Paris Region. We are the innovation and economic development uh, agency for the Paris Region governments. And just a bit of geography, but Paris Region, is this, uh, this is the city of Paris and seven counties surrounding Paris. And then we have Volocopter, uh, represented here by Jean-Christophe Drey. Volocopter is being both the VTOL manufacturer and the airline. Yes, thank you, Solène. Good morning to everyone. So I am Jean-Christophe Drey. I am the uh, commercial lead and managing France for the coming project in 2024 in Paris. Uh, so happy to be there and to uh, explore what we will do in 2024. Thank you. And we will have also Paris Hospital with uh, emergency doctor Mathieu Ede as soon as he is ready. Um, so, as I was telling you, we're already working together. So we are a team. Ah, Mathieu. <laughs> okay. And then we have our final panelist. This is very good timing. Uh, Paris Hospital, APHP, represented by Mathieu Ede. Would you like to introduce yourself or are you still... Uh... Thank you, Solène. Hi, everyone. I'm sorry I'm late. Just took the rain. So, uh, indeed, I'm an emergency physicist in Paris, uh, working in the hospital field, and I'm a researcher on uh, accessibility to uh, uh, constraints of accessibility in emergency care, pre-hospital emergency care. Thank you very much. So, uh, as I was telling you, we're all working together. Um, we have been spending some time trying to actually identify what would be the best topics for you. Uh, and give you the best insights on our project. So we've actually come up with three main themes. First one is, what have we achieved so far? Because we have been working together for a while now. So what have we achieved so far and what we're planning to do for the launch of the first eVTOL network in 2024? Then we know there's a lot of question about safety. So the second, second part of, the, of our insight here is going to be about safety and certification. And then last but not least about social acceptability. So I know we've just had a panel uh, before us about social acceptability. And now we can tell you what we're going to do concretely 
uh, for this social, social, social acceptability and medical use cases. That's why we have also Paris Hospital. So I will just start on what we have achieved so far and I will let Jean-Christophe continue on what we're planning to do. So the story actually started in 2019, so um, it has been quite a while now. Group ADP uh, launched a call for interest uh, to actually gather all the different partners to cover the advanced air mobility value chain. Uh, we've managed to gather regulatory bodies with obviously the DGSA, uh, startup, many startups and different partners in all the different categories of the AM chain value. Because as you know, there's a lot of um, focus that is given to the aircraft and I think uh, actually the Paris Air Mobility uh, demonstrate that quite well. So we're very focused on the aircraft because this is the sexiest part and this is the most also uh, uh, interesting part. But the idea is that like, you need an entire ecosystem around it. So our goal was to create that ecosystem, create that experimental site uh, in an aerodrome in Pontoise, in Sergi, and then gather all the different actors in all the different categories. So the eVTOL manufacturer as well. Uh, obviously, uh, the infrastructure uh, provider, such, such as Group ADP, but also like Skyport, we're in collaboration with them, um, in operations, and uh, obviously the airspace integration. Uh, how, do, how are we going to actually integrate this uh, eVTOL in, in, the, in the airspace? So we've actually gathered all this actor, we've done a lot of testing, We've done our inauguration when the site was actually uh, transformed into the first vertiport fully integrated in Europe. Uh, this inauguration was in November last year. Um, so that's when that test bed became the first vertiport in Europe. Um, and we've done a lot of campaign with Volocopter. We've done an acoustic campaign to measure the noise. Uh, we've done airspace integration campaign. Um, and now we're very happy to actually set the scene for what's going to happen in 2024. So Jean-Christophe, I would just let you give us a clear picture of what we're planning for 2024 together. Thank you, Solène. So uh, maybe you heard about uh, in 2024, we will fly for the first time in uh, Paris Sky and so on. Uh, in summer 2024, I mean July for sure, uh, close to the Olympics game. Uh, good time and big time for Paris. Uh, so what we will do, uh, you can catch a small leaflet which is uh, on the banquet and uh, having a look about the number of routes we will open for 2024. After testing so much stuff, after a lot of work together, after talking with the authorities, so we commit now to have five routes in Paris. What we are looking in 2024, I will come to the route after that, uh, what we are looking in 2024 is mainly the public acceptance stuff. Because it's new, uh, could be for some of you just amazing, for some of the others just boring. So we need to understand, we need to know, we need to learn, we need to gain experience. So that's what we will do from the start up to the end of the commercial experimentation, let's call it like that. And if you want to have a look, I'm so sorry, I cannot show you like that, but <laughs> I will tell you about the road. So we are looking to demonstrate some stuff. So the first one will fly from Charles de Gaulle to Le Bourget. Why? No interest, maybe? Yes, for sure. But Charles de Gaulle is a big airport, super congest, lot of flight, and mainly during the Olympic period. So we will test the integration into the airspace. That's quite important for us and for the DGSC, for sure. So we would like to demonstrate that we can fly in this area because this is your future. First use case will be connecting the airport to the city center. So if we are not able to fly in big airports, in big cities, we cannot develop our business. Second one will be around Le Bourget. Why around Le Bourget? Because it's a kind of touristic tour and in Le Bourget there will be the media village during the Olympic Games. So maybe a good time for all of us to communicate about what we are doing and getting some insights. So let's call it the marketing route uh, for this too. Uh, we have a hub which is located in the south of Paris in Héliport de Paris, which is Ici Les Moulineaux. And we will fly from Ici Les Moulineaux to Château de Versailles, saint cyr les -Cols. So nice touristic existing helicopter route. So let's say we will start to electrify the existing helicopter route. But no mistake, we will not switch from the helicopter to the Velocity or to the UIM stuff. Uh, we are there for giving a new way of moving, which is fully complementary of the existing one. 
the helicopter is capable to do some stuff we cannot do. But we can do some stuff they cannot. So that's the case. Flying from Issy les Moulineaux to saint cyr les cols will be an amazing experience, touristic. The, last one, the third one will be from Issy les Moulineaux to Austerlitz. That one is super crazy because we will land on a barge on the river Seine. So there is nothing there. ADP will build up from scratch a new vertiport. So we are experimenting how to build up a vertiport, how to create a vertiport into the city center. That's what we want to show up. We will go into the city, mainly in Paris, crossing the no-fly zone area and so on. It's quite huge challenge, but that's super exciting. And the last one will be a tour between Issy les Moulineaux to Issy les Moulineaux, flying over the Eiffel Tower and so on, and giving you a nice view of Paris from above. So that's mainly what we are planning to do. We will have a certain number of flights. For now, we are still exploring with the DGAC and so on. But finally, we commit to that. It's public. It's done. So we are on track for flying in 2024 in Paris. We will be the first and the only one. And Paris will be on the top. Thank you very much, Jean-Christophe. Um, so Thierry, from the, you're representing here the French Civil Aviation Authority, the DGAC. Um, <clears throat> How is actually the French Civil Aviation Authority perceiving this project? Um, and how are we going to ensure that this new EV toll, this new electric aircraft, can actually fly among other aircraft? Yes, uh, th thank you, Solène. Uh, of course, when, um, when uh, ADP came to us, when Paris Airport came to us with Volocopter to present their, pro uh, their, their project, uh, we were quite amazed, but also we realized very quickly that it was uh, an amazing project and it was something that, uh, as a civil aviation authority, we had to uh, we have to support or to, uh, to 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 accompany. Um, we we thought that uh, we would learn a lot. It's something completely new and we know that VTOLs are coming. So with this project, as a civil aviation, we will learn a lot how to do with this uh, new way of uh, flying. We also thought that uh, for the public, uh, it will be very interesting to really see and to really uh, uh, evaluate the public assess, uh, assess, uh, acceptability. And that what uh, Jean-Christophe just said, it was very important for us. So at uh, very soon, uh, we thought that uh, um, we, we had to put in place something like uh, a focal point for VTOL because it was very important. So it was in uh, the 20s, much before I came, because I came only in this project six months ago. And uh, then we, are, we need to have some kind of steering committee at very high level. And uh, we have weekly points where I have the, the opportunity to discuss very very often with, uh, with Solen. So it was very important to, to be all uh, talking together to be sure that all the difficulties, all the uh, difficulties that we have to to overcome, uh, can be uh, dealt with. So that's what we we did very quickly, and then we set a little bit the, the big uh, the big things that we think we, we, we have to have. And the first thing was uh, the VTOL, the velocity of helicopter, has to be certified by IASA, the European Agency. That was really the minimum. It was something without the certification for us, at least. We, we don't think it's feasible to have um, op, um, commercial operation. So this is really very important for us. Of course, Volocopter has to be certified. And uh, I'm sure uh, Jean-Christophe will explain us how they intend to do this. But Volocopter, as an say, airline operator, would say, operator has to be certified. So this is the second thing. And after that, we thought that Considering the time we had, so 2024, it, it was quite short, uh, we would use only routes, heli uh, uh, routes, helicopter routes that already exist in, in, in Paris. So it's quite a, a luck for us because it already exists, so we will only use this. And this is a way where we thought that the integration, we talked about the integration, would be much easier in that way because it would be uh, something that we know already a little bit. And of course, we, we, we come up with Volocopter and UIDP that uh, it will be only VFR operations, which is something uh, that was much easier that if we want to do something much more futuristic with uh, 
UTM or U-Space or a VF, uh, IFR operations, which is something that we don't think it's feasible in the near future. So it's really something, the first basis we set with, uh, uh, with Volocopter and with, um, with uh, Paris Airport. Thank you very much, Thierry. So Mathieu, you've been actually doing some research on the use of this new type of, uh, of aircraft. Um, what are the plans for Paris 2024 for medical use cases? I mean, we're not only going to do commercial, so uh, Jean-Christophe has explained the five routes and all of that. What are the plans for 2024 for medical use cases? Thank you, Solent. So the only thing that interests me as a medical doctor and uh, researcher in uh, uh, constraints of accessibility to pre-hospital care is to deliver emergency care uh, within a given territory. So what we've We've been, we, what we have been working on is the feasibility of that type of crafts for emergency and critical care conditions in the pre-hospital field. So we've been working on that earlier and what we are planning to do with this type of testing in uh, summer 2024 will be first some demo flights for different types of um, situations that we can encounter in pre-hospital care, which is we are trying to demonstrate that we can fly doctors to the scene, that we can fly patients to the hospitals, and that we can fly um, some organs that, that are being donated, like transplants. So this is what we're going to model and try to demonstrate that is feasible with that type of craft. Very clear. Thank you, Mathieu. Um, so now moving on to our second topic, a topic that raised a lot of questions is safety. Um, how are we going to actually certify this new type of aircraft? What are the safety considerations? Um, Thierry, first, from a regula regulatory actually perspective, could you tell us what are the main safety considerations uh, that we need to be considered for this launch of this new service? Yes, I think I will try to be a little bit shorter than uh, maybe the routes. Of course, as we said, we only use uh, helicopter routes, and, but still we have to, to make a lot of uh, discussion with Volocopter to see exactly if, if it's okay for each route. And also, also uh, when we talk about the route, we have also to, to talk about the altitude that has been flown. So we have to find some kind of compromise between the, the range and the altitude of uh, the, the Volocopter. So it's something that we are looking very closely uh, with uh, uh, Volocopter, but also with Yaza, but because as I said previously, Yaza will be the, uh, the authority that will certify as a, uh, as a, um, an, uh, an authority will certify Volocopter, which is not very common. Uh, so we have to d discuss with them and we have also to discuss with them about the diversion side because the European regulation that we discuss also with YASA is on the way and uh, this uh, European regulation is uh, asking for the diversion side in case of uh, loss of uh, uh, range and so in that case uh, we need to have discussion about uh, what kind of diversion sites are needed for this kind of uh, new aircraft. Very clear. And um, so Jean-Christophe, you represent here Volocopter. Volocopter is going to be the eVTOL manufacturer, but also the airline. You're now on track for certification in a year time. How do we certify an eVTOL and how do we certify an airline? Let's do it uh, like that. Long story short. Uh, certification could look like uh, stuff of engineering and so on. But quickly, that means we are safe. What does that mean? We are talking about 10 minus 9, 10 minus 6, and so on. But what does that mean in the real life? That means 10 minus 9 means for one million hour flight, maybe an accident can happen. That means the probability is so low. And looking at the commercial aircraft, Boeing, Airbus, Embraer, and so on, this is the same level of safety same certification coming from the EASA, as Thierry was saying about. And why do we want to be the airline at the same time? Airbus Air France, same stuff, whoa. <laughs> so we want to do that because we are pioneering the aviation. We never flown this kind of aircraft. It will be the first time in the world, the first time in the history. 
That means we are manufacturing the aircraft, so we are the best for flying it. We need to learn, we need to understand before selling the aircraft to the other airline and so on, which will build the model in the future. But for starting, we need to be in. We need to be the one which is operating the aircraft, which is doing the uh, ground stuff and so on. And uh, training the pilot, for sure, we need to apply for a certificate for traveling people. I mean, uh, transportation certificate, which is a common word. So we are applying for that. And for the risking our own twin to services, we bought a small fixed wing aircraft. And we will be at a certificate from the EASA for being an air carrier by the end of the year. So that means we are on track for the certification airline, aircraft certification, and so on. So we are ready to go. Awesome. Um, and last but not least about social acceptability. So I know uh, the previous panel was about social acceptability. There was a lot of very interesting topics that were brought up about trust, about accessibility to people. So I think it's a very interesting part and we have that in our, in our head, we have that in our mind when we're developing the first EV, EV tool network in the world. So um, for us, this is a very important topic to tackle. So, Romain, you represent here uh, the Paris region, but also choose Paris region, which is actually uh, the part of attractiveness of the Paris region around the world. You've been with us since the very beginning, actually, since uh, the launch of uh, the experimental site in Pontoise. And very recently, two days ago, here in the Paris Air Show, Valérie Pécresse, president of the Paris region, has officially announced that uh, the Paris region will be financing also this project, more specifically, the Austerlitz site, uh, for an amount of 1 million euros. Um, so why is this project important for the Paris region? Um, and how do you perceive the question of social acceptability? Thank you, Solène. Um, so first, to, to answer the, uh, why we jump into this project, the, one of the main reasons is that in the Paris region, we are the French leading aerospace uh, region in France. So uh, I strongly recommend you to visit the booth over there for the Paris region. You will see amazing uh, SMEs and, and, and also corp big corporates. So that, in our mind, it will give some uh, business opportunities for our local ecosystem. Um, the vision for us, and we have, a, I think, a clear vision for AM. We want them to be clean, to be safe, to, to be multimodal. And multimodal, we're also investing a lot on mass transit and also on a bike infrastructure. So we don't want those modes to compete against each other, but more on a complementary uh, base. And the last point is uh, we don't want to have a, a, an elitist. We don't want to be. We don't have. We don't want to be AM as a rich people toy. So that's our vision. And uh, on the social acceptance uh, question, so then the. I think we have a um, um, different concern on the on the topic. Uh, we we think that social acceptance is very fragile. It can be positive and in other day very negative. So we have to take care of, of very carefully of that. But on our mind, we think that the noise won't be an issue because we have been testing a lot in Pontoise uh, with Volocopter. Uh, safety, we are strongly, uh, we, um, uh, with the work of, of EASA and DGSA, we have a, 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 a fully trust on the, on the, on the work. Uh, a bit of concern about cybersecurity because, yeah, uh, it's something we, we have to take care of. And, but the, the, the last point is um, about the, um, uh, um, the visual pollution could be a, 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 an important topic. And also privacy, if you go through some routes in Paris, you can uh, see the, the actual uh, 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 buildings or, or home from people. So that's a very good, uh, very major concern for us. And the last point is the cost. But uh, I guess Jean-Francois will do some discount for, for, for all of you. But uh, this is something very uh, important on the, on the cost because, again, we don't want to be a, a rich people toy. So that's, that's the vision. And, and social acceptance, yeah, as you mentioned, Solène, is... Uh, is key topic for this um, this um, uh, sector to to take off really. Yeah, and in this topic of social acceptability, there is one specific topic. So we've there has been like social acceptability uh, studies. And there is one topic where everyone sort of like seems to agree on is the use for medical use cases. Um, that's what we have here, like Mathieu. Um, Mathieu, can you tell us what Vitol can help achieve? in situation like cardiac arrest, so situation with critical time-dependent conditions? Yes, 
when we're talking about cardiac arrest, which is kind of my uh, field of specialty in, in research, then each minute without emergency response is associated with a reduction of roughly 10% of survival, which means that if your response teams, your emergency response teams get on scene within eight minutes, then you have 80% chance of dying. What we're talking about here is the critical need to reduce the EMS, well, the emergency medical services response times by less than a minute. And by ground ambulances, this is hardly the case because of the traffic congestions and stuff like that. So what we're gonna do with that types of crafts is reduce EMS response times, then uh, reduce mortality of uh, cardiac arrests and other critical conditions, but mostly cardiac arrest. So we're talking about saving lives within minutes of reductions of response times. Yeah, and that's very inter interesting because when we first like started talking together, that didn't seem like uh, reducing it by one minute for our purpose as we are an airport, didn't seem like something very uh, different, but actually when we discuss with you, for this type of very critical uh, time dependent situation, it changes pretty much everything. Uh, and actually, your research has shown that you can reduce it uh, by at least a minute and a half. I think that's what you were sort of like demonstrating. So for most of the cases, we could be uh, in a situation where we can reduce that time, which is extremely promising. Um, second question for you, Mathieu. How will VTOL reduce inequities in access to urgent care? I think this is something that is very close to your heart. Yeah, this is, this is something that's very important. Like, we have major inequalities of access to urgent care within a given territory. Within the Paris region, whether you're, you're located in a very urban dense area or a peri-urban or rural area, then the EMS response times are widely different and widely variable. With that use of vetoes, we are gonna get the people that are far from EMS bases, stations, far from hospitals, we will get them closer to the critical response, then we will have less variability in, in, in EMS response times, which means that people that are currently far from and distant from um, rapid EMS response times, then they will be closer and then inequalities in access to pre-hospital care will be reduced. By the, by the increase of radius of action of the, those VTOLs in the critical conditions. Yeah, that's very interesting. And also when we were talking together, you mentioned that having just one e VTOL could make a very big difference. Can you just tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, having, within our mathematical mo modeling, modelization, we showed that having only one VTOL in the Paris area would reduce critically the EMS response times and we'd, we would allow the, the, the population to benefit from those shorter response times. With one, you reduce the 90th percentiles of EMS response times critically and with two, VTOLs, then you cover basically the whole region and all cardiac arrest cases and you get everywhere all the time within short response times. That is very exciting. Um, I think we're exactly right on time. We couldn't have done it better. Um, thank you very much. And I think this is very promising on both sort of like use cases for the commercial, for the medical use cases. And I will just conclude with a note on um, the fact that we're going to launch this first eVTOL network in Paris in 2024. We're going to start with an experimentation, and the idea is to find indicators of uh, how is this experimentation going, and what are our strengths and our weaknesses, where do we need to improve. Um, and I think it's going to be very, very promising and exciting in both these use cases, commercial and medical. Thank you very much.